So here we are on the first tee of the Dukes. And the next few lessons, I'm going to call Taking It to the Course. One of our subscribers is James Northern, who lives locally to the Woburn area. And he mentioned with some feedback through the website that he really enjoyed it when I was playing holes and would I do more of it. So James, this one's for you, as well as for everyone else, of course. But uh, I'm rather proud to tell you this is my office. It's a great place to make a living. And the first tee of the Dukes is a tremendous hole. Now, for those of you familiar with the British Masters played on, at Woburn on the Duke's course, the 18th hole as members play it is surrounded by trees. So it's not suitable for big grandstands and television uh, units and so on, and hospitality. So when they play the Masters here, uh, they, put, they start on the second tee and they finish on the members first. Because the members first is a par five. And it's a great finishing hole and it's a great starting hole. But this evening, it's a start for us. So we're going to just play the Duke's course. It's a par five, and we're off the back tee. Now, it makes the hole longer, but what it means is the trees on the right are in the way. The problem for everybody is the prevailing wind is from the right, the southwesterly. So you have out of bounds hard left, you've got trees on the right. So it really takes a brave tee shot to get down there. When I first came here, I was afraid of hitting driver out of bounds, so I hit three wood and then that went out of bounds and then I hit two iron. And then it struck me that if I was Tom Watson playing this hole in a crosswind, he's probably going to hit three or four shots out of a hundred out of bounds. So that begs the question, am I going to let the four or five shots that haven't happened yet contaminate the other 95? No, you've got to take this hole on and play it bravely. Because if you do that, you'll make birdies and eagles. If you're playing two on off the tee, it's a heck of a tough par five. So there's nowhere to hide. It's the first tee of the Dukes. I need to hit a shot down the right with a little bit of draw. To help that effect, I'm going to tee inside the teeing ground, but my feet are outside the teeing ground. Quite legitimate. The ball has to be teed two club lengths behind the markers, that rectangle, but you can stand outside. OK, so here we go. I aim middle of the fairway, go around the circle a little bit, Two thoughts only, coil and release. Well, I'm pleased to tell you, and Simon will confirm it, I've absolutely killed it. I take one of those any day of the week. Okay, let's go and play the second shot. So, as I said, the kill the tee shot, I'm in great shape, slightly hanging line, slightly downwards. Uh, I just want Simon, would you just pan across to the uh, fence here? Because the, the viewers can see how close the out of bounds is. It's basically fairway, 12 feet of semi, and then out of bounds. And when Seve won here, and he won here on two occasions, the British Masters, that was a barbed wire fence. And he managed to keep the ball in play, but Seve had to sit, actually sit on the barbed wire fence. So he had to put towels down his waterproof trousers to protect himself from the barbs. And he played his second shot sitting on the fence. And he got away with it, won the tournament. Now if we pan across here, there's a tree that's about 30 feet high, a little fir tree. Now, in 1985, Lee Trevino's tee shot ended just close to it. He then took a three wood, hit the ball towards the out of bounds, the ball banked the right with perfect fade, went to six inches for a kick in eagle, and he won his first Masters title, which he was delighted with. Trevino didn't think he could win the US Masters because it was a draw spin golf course for the draw player, but he did a beautiful score around here, and Woburn in 1985, he won the British Masters. So it's great to play on the fairways that uh, Ballesteros and Trevino who graced. So let's look at our second shot, it's par five. The bunker on my right is only a couple of hundred yards away, I know I can get past that. So there's quite a big landing area for my fairway wood. Um, I could play short of the bunker, that'll leave me quite a long third shot. I feel fairly confident that I can get the ball down within wedge distance of the green. If I didn't think so, then I would indeed be playing short just of the bunkers on the left hand side. Okay. I just get my body to go with the slope a little bit. Okay, so I'm being honest, warts and all, we're not going to, we're not going to uh, cheat and uh, have double take. I hit an indifferent shot there, a little low hooky thing, but 
Lots of space down there. I've still got a relatively short shot for my third. So before I play my third shot to the first hole at Woburn, I'm just standing next to what I call the Trevino tree. Now this tree was only about 15 feet tall. I think it still had a stake on it uh, when Trevino got here with his tee shot. And what we can see is he had to fire the ball towards the out of bounds on the left and fade it in. Now when he did that, the crowd gasped. They thought he had pulled it out of bounds, but the ball shot out of the club face, then peaked, turned right and ran to six inches. So I'm just going to try and do a little bit of Trevino for you. I'm aiming at the out of bounds left and I'm going to hit a little, hopefully a little low, uh, slidey shot from left to right. So here we go. So hopefully Simon can see the ball flying. It's turning left to right. Hope you saw it bounce, Simon. The difference was Trevino hit to that and I just missed the green. So here I am. This is my third shot into the first. As you saw, my shot from the hanging line, I missed it quite badly, but I knew that if I got past the bunk on the right, there's a big area here that I could bail out into. And happily, although I'm in the semi, being on the left-hand side of the hole, I've got access to the flag. If I'd hit the ball out to the right, it'd be a much more difficult shot out of semi-rough over a bunker. The ball in the fairway is a result of my Lee Trevino fade of a couple of minutes ago. Okay, I've got 94 to the flag. I'm just going to play a straightforward pitching wedge. Nothing fancy, square blade, square stance. Hopefully send the ball to the flag. So hopefully Simon's caught that, got the ball to about four feet. The wind was at my back. I could have played a cut shot, but I personally find a 94 yard cut shot with wind off the left would probably have gone away from me. And I felt the stronger strike out the semi rough was more appropriate. And again, I made the shot easier by coming in from the left hand side. At this point, it's worth mentioning that Tommy Armour, the great coach, nicknamed the Silver Scott, he had two adages regarding course management. The golden rule number one was to hit the shot that had the most chance of success. Rule number two was to choose the shot that made your next shot the easiest. And basically in those two points, you've got an entire book on course management. Okay, let's go and see if we can make the putt for a four. So, landing safely on the first green of the Dukes. I've got about a eight foot putt for a birdie. It's a, an uphill putt. And this is a classic green. The designer of the Duke's course was a man called Charles Laurie, who was a renowned architect. Sadly, he never saw the Duke's completed. He passed away before it opened. But the idiom or the style of design for Charles Laurie were to have flat surfaces on inclined planes. So here we have a green that slopes from back to front, but the basic surface is a flat one. But it's quite easy to read because there's just one movement in the green. On the Marquis Greens, on the third Woburn course, there's a lot more variety. So I know this putt is uphill and it's a fraction from left to right. Okay. Solid five. Should have been a four. Let's go to the second hole on the Dukes. <laughs> 